over the last 80 years, our sea level is rising on average 4 million meters per year. So that's considerable. A lot of oceanfront property will be inundated. The data won't lie. I'm Dr. Lamont Repolet, the president of Kane, New Jersey's Urban Research University. This is Urban Impact, a podcast where we examine the complex issues facing urban communities through meaningful conversations with scholars, community leaders, and others who are driving change. Recorded and produced on our campus in Union, New Jersey, this is Urban Impact. Here are your hosts, Michael Salvatore and Barbara George Johnson. Welcome back to Urban Impact. Today's episode is part two uh, of a great conversation we had with climate geologist June Chang. And if you missed the first part, I encourage you to go back and start with that episode as it lays the groundwork for what you're about to hear. With that, let's pick up our conversation on the effects of climate change on one of our prized possessions here in New Jersey, our beaches. Ortley Beach, my wife, uh, her family grew up in Lavalette, right next door. Mm -hmm. And uh, a quick story, uh, about five years ago after they did beach replenishment there, as you described, what happens to your jetties? They disappear, mm -hmm. right? They get covered and then yeah. you have these these crazy currents. Uh, yeah. So I, I'm surfing in February, yeah. I walk down the beach, mm -hmm. there's snow on the beach, I walk into the ocean with my board, mm -hmm. there's a pickup truck mm. right at the uh, mm. bed there because the trucks drive on the beach down there in the winter. Yeah. yeah. I paddle in the water. I'm surfing uh, about there. I catch a few waves, 20, 30 minutes later, mm. I'm cold. I get out. I see the pickup truck. I go walk up to the beach, to the, to the boardwalk. Mm. The boardwalk's not there. Mm. And I look at the truck and the truck, uh, I go walk over to the truck and I said, D did I get pulled down? He said, <laughs> You got pulled down a mile and a half. He said, I've been following you because I've been watching you surf and I saw you, you get caught in the current right away. <laughs> so I said, oh, great. With that, he got in his truck and drove away and left me a mile and a half down the road. Down the road. Yeah. But my point of that is um, I felt the effects of that. Uh, surfers who use the water, yeah. but not only surfers, those who yeah. visit us yeah. in the summer feel the impact yeah. of that too, yeah. where you have these, mm. these dangerous uh, rip currents where beaches are being closed because mm. of that. Uh, so it certainly is a challenge. And I look forward to the outcome <laughs> and the results of your study because I, I, when I'm really thinking now, though, uh, I think I need to bring you surfing with me. I've uh -huh. never had somebody in the water who understands the crest of the wave better than you. And I think you would really <laughs> enjoy and appreciate it. Uh, can I add one more thing? Yeah. Some surfers always complain uh, a cliff, uh, like a, we call the scarp, that's forming by the storm. It's because this thing is very difficult for them to climb up to the beach. <laughs> so this is actually, we observed a lot of this after the the passage of Hurricane Ophelia. It's very extensive scarp was forming uh, along the beach and also along the dune. And especially the one along the dune is very difficult for natural system to recover. So this is something I, would, I also uh, closely work with uh, experts in our department who has expertise on remote sensing and the uh, and the drone try to map it because with, uh, without um, the 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 manual method, like a like a GPS, we may not be able to capture the three D. So the so modern technology, modern science, really requires us to work together and to try to get the whole area quickly. So remote sensing, and the and the and the drone is a very good tool. Actually, our department is equipped with this. You, you know, I uh, there's a. There's a, an innovative project ar around uh, this topic in the Maldives, right, where they have yeah. a floating city. Yeah. And they did that because they're trying to, they realize they can't necessarily preserve their yeah. their coastline and they yeah. want to have this, this industry there. Yeah. Uh, do we anticipate any of that happening uh, here in the United States? Uh, the, the idea of a floating city, is that even possible? Yeah, actually, I went to a conference last week called NJAFM, and this is a, a, float, a flooding conference. Actually, there's some company really thinking about it. This is not a dream. Maybe in our lifetime, we can have one. <laughs> but uh, uh, this involves a lot of, a lot of like engineering, uh, a lot of uh, um, politics. And uh, so it's not a... a it's beyond the scope of me to discuss this, but uh, I, we can imagine this is a, 
maybe it's a good solution. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I mean, you mentioned the technology and the technology, yeah. even in terms of um, drones being used to uh, get into particular areas, yeah. uh, which are we, we really can't always visit uh, yeah. to identify the impact. Uh, let's talk about a city near and dear to my heart. I worked there for more than 20 years. Uh, it is the oh. city of Long Branch, oh, okay. which you are doing a study in, and I am really curious about. So uh, Long Branch for the past, well, two decades that I was there, uh, we're always planning something magnanimous uh, on the ocean front, whether it be this floating pier, this idea of this ferry coming to there, but it, it never seemed to progress. I'm curious about what you're studying there and what the mm -hmm. impact will have on that coastal community. Yeah, the Long Branch Beach is actually a collaborative uh, research I got uh, with uh, Montclair State University. And uh, they have a, a site over there at Long Branch Beach. The Long Branch Beach has very extensive dunes, right? The, the, the dune is actually, um, uh, what they do is, the dune, huh? uh, when we have a sea breeze, right? The sea breeze picked up usually in the afternoon and uh, the sea breeze can blow over the beach and the beach sand can actually uh, get trapped by the dune grass, right? Because the dune has grass and then when the when the sea breeze picked up, the sand can get trapped and make the dune get taller and taller. But at night time, we may have land breeze. The, 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 the wind is blowing from the, the land to ocean. Because we have grass, the, the sand just uh, stuck there, won't be able to come back to the beach. That's why dune is always accumulating. The sand is growing and growing. And uh, this is one of the things uh, Long Branch is trying to protect their shore. It, uh, artificially build a lot of dunes and also plant the veggies and uh, let the dune grow. So um, I'm working with using drones, monitor how the dune interact with the beach as well as the portion that's under the ocean. The, my contribution is actually on the uh, ocean part. So what I do is I, um, thanks to our department, I got a canoe, <laughs> although it sounds uh, interesting, a little risky to paddle the canoe in the ocean. Uh, luckily, I have a student who is a very good surfer, can, is very skilled at, a, at a, a paddling the canoe. And uh, I mount my equipment, one is a, a GPS RDK, another one piece is a, a echo sounder uh, to try to mapping the, the near shore sea floor. We didn't go crazy, go to the very deep ocean. Right? We just uh, in the very near near the coast and uh, try to in the water, try to map what's uh, like a, the, the ocean floor, ocean floor. Why that matter, huh? Because our ocean floor is not linear. It's we uh, if you're a surfer, you, you you won't miss it. We have a big waves breaking uh, in some area. What do we call it? Is a is a bar. It's actually there's a bar over sandbar, there. Sandbar, yeah, yes, sure. Yeah, there's a sandbar over there. Sandbar is very, very dynamic. It changes all the times because the wave breaking release a lot of energy. And what I'm doing is try to document, try to mapping how this bar moving onshore and offshore. And actually, this bar at one point can touch to the to the beach, and the beach can all of a sudden grow wider and this beach sand can be picked up by the wind and this wind can be dumped on the dune and help the dune to grow. So my piece is try to uh, forming like a dune beach and near shore system. So uh, this is a very interesting project. I'm uh, involved. I'm so lucky to have King Ocean students working with me. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I have. <laughs> I, I'm picturing you in a canoe right now in the ocean. The, so the, the ocean's been really active. Uh, the fall is a very inactive time for uh, the ocean. So yeah. I'm just curious because uh, the waves have been pretty awesome for the past two months on yeah. and off. You're in a canoe in yeah. the ocean. Are there, is this a day where we're getting this, this swell that's coming in or is this a very calm day that you're in the ocean? Uh, we purposely pick a, a relatively calm day. We never get a perfect, like a super, like a perfectly calm day. No, always some, some wave in the ocean. Actually in the morning time, it's better than the afternoon time. I remember that day was a, a Thursday. I have class, so so a Friday. <laughs> I have class, so I in the so I, I have to Wednesday. I remember, so I, I have to finish my class, and when, when, by the time I get there, the wave already picked up. But uh, uh, we don't want to miss the opportunity, <laughs> so we we, uh, we we launch the boat, 
and luckily we get all the data we want. So I'm in the pro in the in the in, uh, right now we are processing the data and uh, try to combine this data in the ocean with the, the data that's on the beach and the dune and the, try to make a big picture of our area. Uh, what, what, did you have a wetsuit on? Yeah, yeah, oh, wetsuit. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right, uh, last question for today. Uh, you, you've been great so far. This has uh, really been an education. Uh, tell me what this means for for Kane students here. Like, what what type of research projects are in the future? What what are you in picturing? Um, my study is a very uh, hands on and try to pr solve practical problem. So, as I mentioned, I do beach survey using GPS, RTK, using echo sounder, and this equipment is very handy. And, uh, and students get trained in my group can find a consulting company job because it's very commonly used uh, tools and not only just using tools also students get a, a train to do systematic field observation so because our our study is heavily based on experience based on what you feel what you can really uh, sense on the coast so that's the thing i'm emphasizing i, I, I encourage students who is a uh, outdoor, like go out on the beach and walking with me, and uh, we will use a lot of uh, equipment. And uh, so, not a, not only just the survey, huh? We also, uh, when we collect the data, we analyze it and we try to find why why the beach changes the way it changes. So we, um, my my group also equipped with a, a wave gauge and tide gauge, and uh, try to figure out. Uh, the mechanism and uh, so we also deploy these gauges students also get trained in that area and uh, modern science always requires us to do computer huh so i'm not a uh, modeler but i'm using uh, some existing model or add some um, modules with my expertise so that's the the way i take so I, i'm using some existing uh, commercial softwares and put all the data we collected in the computer model and then simulate it, try to figure out the, the overall pattern. And the students can also get trained uh, using some uh, very popular commercial softwares and uh, that can help them to get into an in, uh, industrial job or a uh, uh, graduate study. What, yeah. what about our, um, is artificial intelligence built into <laughs> any of this? What, what do you, where do you see artificial intelligence playing a role in some of this research. Yeah, artificial engineering is very, uh, it's everywhere, it's everywhere. This is the part I'm still uh, learning. And uh, I, I, I attend some conference, people talking about how to um, <clears throat> get the, the wave field from remote sensing images. And that way, uh, but we still need the ground data. So that's the way I take. So we still need to touch the ground. Although artificial intelligence is a fancy, right? So we still need a, like a, uh, understand, yeah, what's going on. Then we can contribute to. Uh, we use you use the artificial intelligence as a tool to to build up build up our capacity. I also part of my thing not only just a researcher. I I, I know that I am aware of that I'm also an educator. I um, that's why I'm heavily involved in some outreach programs. I know mm, let public people understand the coastal process is very important. That can help us to promote all these uh, living shoreline projects and all these shore protection projects down the road. And um, as we mentioned, um, for the beach nourishment, when people say, oh, a lot of the beach all of a sudden get lost and uh, just uh, one month after nourishment, what's the point of doing that? And we actually have a, a good reason for, for doing this. And uh, there's some science engineering background and some knowledge to, to get to the people, to let people understand. Another thing is sea level rise. Some people just don't get <laughs> the climate change. So we have a data. So, so along our coast, New Jersey has a long history. For example, our tidal gauge at Sandy Hook goes back to like 80 years ago. So that's the real major data of tidal gauge. If you look at the data, you won't, the data won't lie. They just show over the last 80 years, our sea level is rising on average four million meters per year. So that's considerable. If we just keep this trend going and a lot of oceanfront property will be inundated. A lot of things will have problem. So that's the so 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 I have a big mission. I do have a great passion for what I'm studying. As I mentioned, 
at the beginning, the beach is a very uh, fun place, right? It's also a very important place, not only just for human beings, also a lot of uh, marine creatures, a lot of species in our, it's a, a, a bird uh, actually nesting on a beach, migrating birds nesting is very important. Uh, our New Jersey beach is a very important, like a midway for migrating birds to, to rest in here. So how to protect them? This, our beach is shrinking day by day because the sea level rise never stop. And uh, so how to get a, a better solution for not only just for human, also for the entire ecosystem. Thank you for listening to Urban Impact, a podcast produced by Kane. New Jersey's Urban Research University. Subscribe, rate, and review wherever you get podcasts. For more information, visit kane.edu forward slash urban impact. Dash impact.